Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The booby fly is a super cool little bass and panfish pattern that creates quite the ruckus on the water surface when retrieved. Kind of like ringing the dinner bell, fish will come from a ways off to investigate. The foundation of the fly is a long shanked size 8 hook. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Load a bobbin with a spool of white unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and after taking a few wraps rearward, snip off the excess tag. Fibers from a red marabou feather are used to form the bottom part of the fly's tail. While keeping the tips aligned, strip a clump of 20 or so fibers free from the stem. Wetting the fibers really helps to keep them under control. Place the clump on top of the hook shank and measure to form a tail about a full hook in length. Transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend, then begin binding the fibers to the top of the hook shank with wraps of tying thread. To add more bulk to the tail, strip another similar sized clump of red marabou fibers free from the stem, wet them, then secure them to the hook shank in the same manner. Pull up and toward you with both clumps of marabou as you take thread wraps rearward. This will help the fibers to land on top of the hook shank as opposed to being pushed down its sides. End with your tying thread back up the hook shank. Trim the excess butt ends of the marabou off close. Snip three to four strands of pearl crystal flash free from the hank and find their midpoint. Place the midpoint on top of the hook shank at the location of your tying thread and take a couple of wraps to secure it. Fold the forward pointing strands back, then bind all the strands to the top of the hook shank with thread wraps. Go all the way back to the base of the tail. End with your tying thread up where you started. Trim the crystal flash off to the same length as the red marabou. To finish the tail, tie in just a single clump of the white marabou in the same manner as you did the red and trim the butt end off close. Take a few more thread wraps to create a ramp from the snipped off butt ends down to the hook shank. Select one of the wider width strips of white craft foam. Trim the corners off one end like so. Place the foam against the far side of the hook holding it tight with the thumb and index finger of your left hand. Start taking thread wraps. This will push the foam to the underside of the hook. Take nice tight thread wraps to firmly anchor it there. Poke a bodkin through the hook eye to mark a spot on the foam. Shove your bodkin through that spot to create a small hole all the way through the foam. Fold the forward pointing portion of the foam back and carefully work the hook eye through the hole you just created. Take thread wraps to secure the folded back portion of the foam to the top of the hook shank. You can then carefully trim that portion of foam off close in back of the thread wraps. Take a few more tight wraps to really lock the foam in place and create a ramp down to the hook shank. The foam head of the booby should now look something like this. In most cases, the ends of the foam will be angled so they need to be snipped off square to form landing pads for the fly's eyes. These landing pads should be parallel and roughly circular in shape. Take rearward wraps to position your tying thread right at the base of the tail. Pick up one of the smaller width pieces of foam and this time snip one end of it into a point. Place the foam on top of the hook shank so the point extends about halfway down the fly's tail. Take two or three wraps over top of the foam, then two around just the shank, followed by a few more over top of the foam. End with your tying thread at about the midpoint of the hook shank. Pick up the strand of pearl cactus chenille and strip the fibers from one end to expose a quarter inch of string core. Lay the string against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it back to the base of the tail. End with your tying thread immediately in back of the fly's foam head. Start taking wraps with the chenille, pulling the fibers back as you go. When you reach your tying thread, use it to firmly anchor the chenille, then pull the foam strip forward over top of the chenille and take several good firm thread wraps to secure it. 
Reach in with your tying scissors and carefully snip the excess forward pointing portion of the foam off close. Angle your tying thread under the head of the fly and take a couple of wraps behind the hook eye. Now, start taking wraps with the chenille to cover up the snipped off foam end. Then make angled wraps over top of the fly's head and around the hook shank, behind the eye. End with the chenille on the far side of the hook, immediately behind the eye. Take tight thread wraps to secure it there. Do your best to keep the eye at least somewhat clear of fibers. Pull the excess chenille up and snip it off close. Get hold of your whip finish tool and use it to do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. Trim down all the chenille fibers around the hook eye, on top of the foam head, and anything that blocks the flat eye ends of the head. After trimming, the fly should look about like this. Using a bodkin, pick up one of the 3D eyes and set it aside within the easy reach. Apply a small drop of super glue to the exposed foam eye landing pad on the near side of the hook. Place the eye on top of the adhesive and hold it down with pressure until the adhesive sets. Repeat the procedure on the far side of the hook so you end up with mirror image eyes on either side of the fly's head. Head cement, here Sally Hansen hard as nails, applied to the thread wraps behind the hook eye will prevent them from coming unraveled. Making sure the eye is clear is always a good idea. And that's the booby fly, ready to attract and antagonize bass and panfish near you. <laughs>